This video tutorial on mains electricity starts with the structure of wires and cables and then explains how a plug is wired and why it's wired that way. The way fuses work and their function is explained, why there are three wires, live, neutral and earth, and what they do, the difference between AC and DC, and finally, other safety devices. Electricity is our most flexible form of energy, readily converted to heat, light, sound and motion, and we use it around the home as well as in commerce, business and industry. Electricity is delivered to the machines that we use around the house by a cable. The outer layer of that cable is largely there to prevent mechanical damage, cutting and scraping. It also provides insulation. The inner layers of plastic are there to provide insulation between wires to stop them short-circuiting within the cable itself to prevent the electricity taking a quick way round. And they're also colour-coded so that we can identify one wire to another. Not all cables are of the same thickness. The thicker the cable, the larger the current that it can carry. The cable is attached to the mains electricity via a plug, the inside of which you can see here. I'm not going to worry too much about each part of the plug and what it does, really just the names for the moment. The cable clamp, however, is fairly obvious. That is there to clamp the cable into place so that a jerk on the wire does not pull the terminals out. At the top is the neutral wire, which is blue. On the right hand side is the earth wire, green and yellow, and this is a safety device, more of which later. The live wire, brown, is connected to the terminal which is also attached to the fuse. The fuse is another safety device which contains a small wire, a thin wire, which will melt if too much current flows. Not every cable has an earth wire and therefore not every plug has an earth wire connection. This is because some of the things that we use around the house are made of plastic and don't require an earth. There's a bit more explanation of this shortly. So the first part of this we'll look at is the fuse. Now fuses are devices which are used in all sorts of places and all sorts of circuits, not just into plugs. And here I've got a diagram of a fuse in a simple circuit with two dry cells and a bulb. The fuse is there to protect the dry cells and the bulb in case there is some kind of overload, in some cases some kind of error been made in constructing the circuit. To help to explain this, I'm going to deliberately introduce a fault and overload the circuit. The fuse is a simple device, simply a thin wire in a glass tube, and the wire will melt if too much current flows. I put a bit of paper underneath the fuse so you can see it more easily, and I'm extending the circuit to put an extra bulb. This is a parallel circuit, and because it's a parallel circuit, more current will flow through the fuse and from the batteries through the circuit because there are two routes that the current can take. However, this current is still not too high to overload the batteries or to blow the fuse. I'm now going to deliberately overload the cells much more by placing a thick connector across the circuit to short circuit so that the current can be very large, there's very little resistance in the circuit, a very large current will flow through. And in doing this, I, I'm risking damaging the cells in the circuit. Here is the circuit with a close-up in the top corner of the fuse. As I introduce a short circuit, you should be able to see the fuse melt and break. The bulbs go out because the circuit's broken, and by the arrow you should just see the gap in the fuse. If we slow the video right down and then insert a still frame, you can see the instant at which the fuse actually melts. Different electrical devices have fuses of different values. For example, this lamp has a 3 amp fuse fitted to the plug. The plug to the power supply has a 5 amp fuse. And this extension lead, which may have many things plugged into it in turn, has a larger fuse. It has a 13 amp fuse. 
The value written on the fuse is the maximum current that can pass before the fuse will melt. When choosing a fuse, we must pick one that is big enough to allow the normal current to pass through, but only just. If any excess current passes, it is likely that there is a fault and the fuse should melt to protect the circuit and to protect the machine that it's connected to. Some plugs, and therefore the things that they're connected to, have no earth wire. But all have a live wire, which is the brown, and a neutral wire, which is the blue. So first of all, we'll look at the function of the live wire and the neutral wire. This is a rather amplified circuit for a hairdryer. A hairdryer typically would not have an earth. It would only have a connection to the live and to the neutral. The live wire will have a fuse in it to protect for an overload and will have a switch. And I've drawn here the switch on. Now, the current is delivered by the live wire. The electrical energy originally from the power station is pushed through the live wire. The neutral wire simply serves there to return the electricity so that there is a complete circuit. Now it would be useful to say here that the electricity delivered from the power station through our domestic mains is not direct current. Here's a graph of a direct current supply. It's a graph of how the current changes with time. And a direct current is a steady current in one direction. However, a graph of mains electricity is like this. It is not direct, it is not steady in one direction. It flows first of all in one direction and then the other. So the voltage alternates and so does the current that it pushes through, hence alternating current. In fact, it swaps over 50 times a second. There are 50 cycles of change per second. The reasons it's like this are down to efficiency in the way electricity is supplied. And we'll explain that in a different video. But bear in mind, it is AC that is supplied to your hairdryer and everything else. So the live through the live wire, the electricity is pushed and then pulled. And the neutral wire only serves to complete the circuit. We'll move on now to the purpose of the earth wire, which is the green and yellow wire connected to the top of the plug, the longest prong of the plug. In this diagram, I've again separated the strands of the cable. The earth wire, yellow and green, the neutral blue and the brown live. The switch is closed, the fuse is in the live wire. We have someone using this cooker. As you can see, I'm a fantastic artist. As before, the live wire delivers the power to the cooker, the neutral wire completes the circuit, the earth wire is connected carefully and securely to the casing. As we said before, the earth wire is a safety device. Let's imagine the wiring of the cooker without the earth. And supposing that within the cooker there is a fault, that somehow the live wire, perhaps one of the elements that are heating up the cooker, uh, touches the casing of the cooker. Now, the person who's using that cooker is likely to touch the cooker in turn, perhaps by the pan, perhaps touching the cooker itself. If the live wire is somewhere touching the cooker, then the electric current can flow through the live wire, around the cooker, and then down to the ground through the person that is touching the cooker. Now, unfortunately, if that happens, it has a fairly dramatic effect on the person. They are likely to be electrocuted. The earth wire can avoid this dramatic sequence. If there is a fault, a similar fault in the cooker, then instead of traveling through the person, the electricity will simply travel down the easy path, which is the earth wire, a thick copper wire, connected to the ground. That will be a large current and because it's a large current, that overload will cause the fuse to melt and then cut off the electricity.
The plug attached to this lamp does not require an earth wire. And the reason is that the lamp is made of plastic and plastic is an excellent insulator. So the chances of getting a shock from the lamp or from this power supply are very slight. However, an earth must be fitted to anything that is made of metal, such as electric cookers, electric fires, or this extension lead, because anything could be plugged into the extension lead. The main wiring in the house is protected by fuses in a fuse box, generally stuck away in a garage or in a utility room. In fact, although I say they're fuses, in this box they have been replaced by micro switches, which perform the same function as a fuse, switching the current off very rapidly if a circuit is overloaded. At the left hand side of this box is a main switch. This is a residual current circuit breaker. The mouthful of a name is often reduced to the initials RCCB. It is a safety device now fitted in almost all houses whereby the current coming in through the live wire is compared to the current leaving via the neutral wire. Any slight difference indicates a fault in the house and the current is switched off extremely quickly in a tiny fraction of a second. Thank you for watching.